We about to go off, off, off when the speakers go blow, blow, blow. Everybody turn up, up, up. It's about to go down, down, down. Make the noise, spin, spin, spin. When the bass go loud, loud, loud. We about to go in, 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 and we can't stop now, now, now. So go on a podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. I was looking at my Patreon requests, right? And I remember, oh fuck, don't we have a Todrick Hall Patreon request coming up soon? And then I looked at it and I saw it was. The next one? No, but we'll get to that shit. <laughs> and I do, I do mean shit. <laughs> uh, but first. I couldn't believe. What did you want to talk about first? I want to know. I didn't have anything. That was it. Oh, okay. We well, can talk about that that Italian song from Spider-Man 2. Oh, that's yeah. About it. La, 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 la. la. Okay, so okay, here's so, the thing, right? Yeah. I was in the bathroom taking a piss, and Darren calls me <laughs> uh, before I'm ready to go, and he he starts just humming this song at me, and I could have swore within the first three notes that he was humming the "Go Deliver Pizzas" theme from the scene in the Spider-Man Two video game for PlayStation Two. Uh, apparently, he wasn't. Have you ever seen the movie Life Stinks, the Mel Brooks movie? <laughs> You're the only person who remembers that movie, dude. I swear. My mom had it on VHS, what can I say? <laughs> your, Look. Your, your genuine, unique upbringing uh, has made I, you that much more aware of obscure Mel Brooks movies than arguably anyone else in existence. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know about the silent movie, the, Stop, the parody dude. of the Hitchcock uh, Birds movie. You know what I mean? High anxiety, you Hi, know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, just checking them off. Yeah. But yeah, was it in that movie? Mel Brooks' character is supposed to go out into, and be a homeless person for like 30 days or something like that. Slowly turns around and just, you know, starts uh, humming to himself. And he goes, la, 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 la. And that's what I was thinking of. Can we talk about our boy, Iverson Tucker, for a second? A few months back. I got an email from him saying, hey, I uh, want to support you on Patreon. We're going to request an album. I'm going to request this album by the ILYs, which was a side project from the drummer of Death Grips. And even people who aren't a big fan of Death Grips uh, can usually attest that the drumming on those albums can be pretty fucking crazy. So I was interested to hear what the ILYs had to, had to offer. So in my own time, I listened to that album. And I dug it. I was looking forward to talking about that album on the show. Until your boy Iverson Tucker decided to change his mind and changed it to the Sesame Street Gangsters album I Like Fat. What? What? And, and just, I, I don't, I don't know what happened, dude. I, where did we go wrong? What did we do to deserve this? What? He was like, well, yeah. I, lo I like that album a lot, but, uh, I think you just have more fun with the, the operative word, the, the, the word, the, the word being fun, Darren, did you, oh, at any point, have any fun listening to this? Uh, I, I wish you could see, I wish you could hear my stare into the abyss that I've been doing as you've been talking. See, you know what? I can, actually. <laughs> it's the weirdest, damnedest thing I can sense it. It's a fiery, burning it's, glare. It's flames I feel it almost... on the side of my face. Uh-huh. Just <laughs> burning yeah. sensation. That's it. I don't think I've ever hated an album as much as this one. Uh -huh. and, and, and trust me, dude, because we've... We haven't reviewed 200 albums. In fact, we've done more than that by now because we've been doing two albums per show. Not in the over 200 mm. reviews we've done. And I've been racking my brain. Slim Thug. No. Lil B. Lil... Mm, no. No. That one time that guy requested his own album? No. <laughs> Joker with two R's. Oh no! Oh, the hitters, no. the heavy hitters. Uh -uh. Yeah, these these all have spots in the Hall of Fame. Cue that fucking right in the Hall of Fame. That fucking song have that going in the background this whole time. Mm. This is the worst album I've listened to. 
not since the olden times, in the long, long time ago, in the history of this podcast, have I ever... You remember back in the day, right? I'm sure it was honestly pretty annoying when we'd listen to an album and I would be like, I didn't listen to the whole thing. <laughs> uh, on some albums, you couldn't get me to listen to the whole thing. But you know what? Mm. I've, been a, I've been a good boy. I couldn't do it this time. And you know, I will concede to you. I, I remember, mm. you know, kind of a... Uh... Because that kind of made me sort of reevaluate, you know, how I consider an album. Like, of course, just like I mean, if you've come to five songs that you don't like in a row, this shit's not gonna get any better by track ten. I must also concede that I did not finish listening to this fucking prank of a goddamn album. How? Okay, here's a question: How long did you make it? I made it to track five. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. I, I sat through 12. How many tracks are there? Um, I think there's like 14. Oh, man. And, and honestly, salute. I all... Fucking salute this man. You, everyone in the goddamn <laughs> comment section, <laughs> fucking take your caps off for this motherfucker right here. Throw, put fucking cap emojis or whatever the fuck. Throw over the fucking air for this man. Because <laughs> Jesus Christ. And and this is not me telling you to listen to any portion of this album. Because you fucking should goddamn no. not. Nah. -uh. Like, when I hit that stop button at the end of the fifth track, I'm just like, no more. Like, it wasn't like a, oh, hyperbolic pause. Whoa, what ridiculous. It was just like, no, this has to stop. Like, I'm this not. This ends now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, I was thinking about listening to it again. You know, I was, <laughs> That's a joke. I was thinking, because, you know, the fuck out of I here. always try to give it the second chance, you know? But you didn't I, even give it one whole chance. But I looked at the first five tracks again, and my brain immediately lit up with why I hated all of them. They just, like, sparked, like, just, like, flames into my imagination as every worst moment of the, these songs came back to me. And, and then, as I was looking for the lyrics, I found that I could not find the lyrics, and I was like, Fuck this album. It I, does not know. goddamn deserve me trying to listen through to figure out which parts I... No. No, I'm not I, doing this. <laughs> I didn't even try to look for the lyrics. I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. It's not worth it. I'm just gonna fucking go in. Oh because it's not like God. they were hard to make out. It's not like they were putting in fucking... It wasn't a goddamn word salad. The, this is the complete opposite of rapidity rap. I just like the idea that you basically had a Lord supercut in your head of all the bad times yes. on yes. this album. It was just like was five cut. songs <laughs> fucking summarized in like five to ten seconds and it's just like memories in black and white just flooding through your brain. I'm like, nope. Uh, like warning signs to my brain. Like the coloring of a poisonous frog as I... <laughs> <laughs> as the, it, as the, the, the memory is reminding me, ah, don't hit that play button, you remember what happened. First time I tried listening to this album, uh, Spotify did this fun thing where it didn't play them in order, it played them in shuffle. So I actually heard the 13th song second. So I did actually hear a total of 13 songs, um, but I didn't listen to the 13th song a second time. Uh, so instead, I listened to the first 12 songs, uh... Saving myself from the six-minute track narc mm. was not about uh, to see what that mm -hmm. was about. No, sir. Um, I don't even know if I can give this album a rating. I think it's disqualified. So many of the songs I couldn't listen through the whole way, um, and I didn't even listen to the whole album. This album isn't incomplete. That's what it fucking is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know when you play uh, Super Smash Brothers in the fucking extra levels? Incomplete. <laughs> this is a fucking DNF. Did not finish. So many tracks just got zeros that I couldn't even, when it came down time to, like, do, do the fucking division, see what the average is. It's like, man, two songs got ones. One song got a one and a half. All the other ones got zeros. So... It's my it's my honor to tell you that because you dipped at track five, Jerk Johnson, you missed oh. possibly the most unassuming and almost funny, almost, <laughs> almost funny, funny. Mm. the five and a half minute long track poop. You you wouldn't expect much. 
but it happens to be the closest thing to like a competent. <laughs> it was the closest this album came. Mm. Either you've got them trying way too hard, or like not at all. This album came out in two thousand four, by the way. So I, I tried to look at it in two thousand four lenses, dude. Encore wipes the fucking floor with this album. This can't like, have been professionally produced. Like, what is this? I would gladly listen to Encore the whole way through. Then this again. Absolutely. Once. Absolutely. Never again. So let me tell you about my adventure. Do you remember a couple of years ago, Movie 43 came out and people oh. were like, that's the oh. worst movie of the year. So... <sighs> That's what happened with uh, the other album we reviewed where I heard, like, the worst song. I I declared the worst song I had ever heard. Ugly Duckling. Yes, yes. Wow, yeah. That was the movie 43, the, you said a bad word, I'm gonna tell your mama on you. It was like, Here comes the church choir. Who, (laughs) yeah, who's this for? This song is only punishment for children. No one needs to hear this. This needs to be in a fucking bargain bin. This was... The inappropriate comedy that came out a couple of weeks later that people were just like, oh my god, wait a minute. No, this is much worse. Oh my god, that's right. Oh, I actually confused the two in my head. Can't get any worse than this. Like, just we weren't even finished with the sentence and you just see a green come into place. Fucking lo and behold, this goddamn album. Oh my god, so... I start off the song with short bus. It really lets you know what you're in for, doesn't it? <laughs> Can I just point out how, by the way, their whole thing is their, like, try-hard, edgelord humor, but the first song, short bus, despite throwing the R word around a couple times, oddly describes the bus more than the kids on the bus? Like, like, I- I- I'm glad you did do that, because I'm not really here for jokes right. about disabled kids, but it's just a song about a bus for, at that point. For a song about this type of topic, you would assume, like, if you're gonna fucking do it, if you're gonna offend me, fucking offend me, like, quit pussyfooting around and hit me, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're gonna fucking do it, just goddamn do it. This album is sub-bizarre. <laughs> yes! Like, it really gets that bad. Like, the song is called Short Bus. We can't reiterate this enough. So you already yeah. know what it is. And then there's, like, a whole part of the song about, like, racing with, like, minivans. And, yeah. Oh we, we, oh, we made the bus flip. I get yeah. to fuck my girlfriend. Uh-huh. Turning the concept on its ear, right? You know, uh-huh. usually yeah. rappers are all about, oh, I'm taking your girlfriend. But, <laughs> see, the, I actually want the reverse to happen because he, he's a cuckold. It's a fucking cuckold anthem. Yeah, how about that? That's fine. It's a decent premise, I guess. Just like the short bus thing, it's so satisfied with the idea of its premise, it doesn't do anything with it. And a super white guy trying to, and you know, I say super white guy because he specifically does the white guy trying to do the soul singing. You have two guys, and I already forget the names. Um, I was hoping at least one of them was black because... Someone does drop an N-word later. Every couple tracks, uh, they say they're gay, but then that's, like, totally negated by the next track, and you know they're just doing it for a joke. Like, hey, it's convenient to say it here, so I can make a gay joke because it's at my expense. This was the height of 2004, uh, yeah. rap comedy. Red, Red Man was uh, becoming a distant memory. You got fucking Lord of the Dance, which is just the most pointless. Like, here's my main problem with this album. The biggest problem where it just falls apart. This is a novelty album, right? Why? Why is like every song over four minutes? Why are they so long? Especially since they're all they're essentially concepts. They they don't have they're they're silly concepts with no jokes to them. There's no joke. It's the no. skeleton of a joke song without any actual, you know, parts of it that make you laugh at the ridiculousness of the concept. It's it's like they tried to think of a silly concept and then maybe write a serious song on a silly concept. 
and it doesn't fucking work. Like, I know yeah. they're going for jokes, but there are just so few jokes that I can't believe that they were trying to write jokes. I refuse to believe that. In Lord of the Dance, the, like, the whole first verse is setting up to this punchline that never comes, where it's like, hey, I'm Lord of the Dance, right? It's like, oh, okay, so you're gonna be like a real shitty dancer, right? Well, I mean, yeah, probably. We're never really gonna go too much into that, though. Oh, but I do a dance called the fetus. Okay, yeah. so, like, what's that dance entail? Oh, like, I, I mean, I wasn't, gonna, I wasn't gonna describe it or anything. You know, it's just, it's just the name of the dance is called the fetus, so that should be the joke. Because what kind of dance would that be? I'm just gonna let you leave that up to your imagination, because I'm too fucking lazy to write a song describing it to you. Yo, I feel like I'm legit listening to, like, a 2004 SNL writer making a rap album. Like, like, where it's li- you, you've seen an SNL sketch. I remember I saw one recently where it was about, like, fucking pants or something. Holes. Yeah, it was just like, holes are in everything. Holes are in our shirts and holes are in our socks. Holes are in these things. And it's just like, oh, yeah. Hey, look, uh, I'm uh, Alec Baldwin dressed up as uh, Benjamin Franklin. And I like holes. Holes are in this sweater and holes are in this cup. And it's just like, w- I mean, it is silly that that is happening. But, but where's the n- joke? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that's that's what these songs feel like. It's just like, yes, this is like they're trying to get that Lonely Island feel. But Lonely Island gives you jokes. There are moments of like timing and things like that where it's just like, oh, you're expecting it to go this way and it went that way. You know what I mean? Like setups and punchlines. You know how some albums we talk about tend to have something for everyone? Uh, this album has nothing for anyone. <laughs> I'm sorry. The Wiz Kids, Sesame Street Gangbang, Sags Back Again. I- I'm not even exaggerating. These songs aren't about anything. I think I'm Sorry might be the first of three or four songs that are like, LOL, fat women, haha. Mm. We- we- we've got jokes on jokes on jokes about, <laughs> about just fat women. As this, this is the only demographic we're going to explicitly make fun of, which is odd. We're going to do it for four songs, but I was just reminded, so you didn't hear Sags back again. SSG is back again. Oh my god. They did it. They fucking, oh. <laughs> they fucking <laughs> oh, went there. Oh, there was a delay. Oh no. And they oh, had no the god, dude. Oh. oh my god, I wouldn't have been able to take it. I wouldn't have been able to take it. Especially after Life is a Highway. No! Oh, you don't get to man. do two in a row. Oh, That's disrespect. Man. That's disrespect. I gotta at least mention the song Gay Leprechaun. It's nice enough that it lets you know exactly the two things we're gonna be making fun of in this song. It's gonna be gay jokes, it's gonna be leprechaun jokes. And by golly, we're gonna layer them on top of each other. And aren't we, aren't we so clever? And, and just for good measure, the song itself isn't even gonna start for a minute and thirty seconds. We're gonna give you, we're gonna give you a fucking background. We're gonna, we're gonna tell you the story of the gay leprechauns, and then just, then just like a half a minute of them just going, woo, he he he, ha ha ha. Ooh. Like, I'm not even exaggerating, dude. I don't know what the fuck they what thought they the were world? doing here. What in the it world? is no exaggeration. It's under the bottom of the barrel, not no creativity. This is like just signifiers of what comedy might look like to like a foreign alien world where it's yeah. like gay people, leprechauns, uh, mm. and rainbow. Uh. Uh, uh, I mean, you know. Who saw the gay leprechaun say, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Dude, is this guy from Denmark or something? Is this the fucking urban dance squad all over again? Oh, Where just shit. motherfuckers who don't know English. Good just like <laughs> the, the fucking demagogue. <laughs> I forgot the, the fucking fucking demagogue. <laughs> oh, man, I forgot. Urban, <laughs> urban dance squad has a spot in our Hall of Fame. I forgot oh, all about yes. them. Most definitely, I'd say they t- they had the crown until uh, until your boys uh, 
Who are those? Who? Who? The ugly Duckling. Are? Until Ugly Duckling took it, and then it was fucking <laughs> snatched <laughs> away at the home fucking <laughs> right there. Home base was snatched away by <laughs> your boys, Sesame Street gangsters, with their fucking album. I like fat. The Sesame Street gangsters, much like Game of Thrones, subverting your expectations at every turn. I mean, Sesame Street. Nah. But then gangsters! Would you be surprised? <laughs> Would you be the least bit surprised when you find out that there's, like, no mention of Sesame Street on this album? Like, you know, that, that almost is actually kind of... That's, that, kind that's of an clever. avenue, pardon the pun, they don't examine at all. I commend them for having showing the fucking restraint. Ah, okay. At the very least. Because, you know, like, you're... They at least said, whoever the fuck these people are, they at least looked at each other and said, all right, that's a little too on the nose. <laughs> I was trying to think of what their names were, and honestly, like, off the top of my head, I was like, I think the names were, like, Crowbar and Sandwich. Their names are Jerk Johnson. That's what their fucking Jerk names are. Jerk Johnson, much like Jack Johnson. It's just fucking white boy beach acoustic guitar shit. Oh, my lord. And, Except and it's like... And puka shells. It's a- Except it's like music from fucking um, Newgrounds fucking videos or some shit, man. But, but even by that point, too late. Yeah, ex- like, exactly. It, it missed the fucking mark by like at least two years. Like this is like Kill Frog or some shit. This is music to make shitty flesh animations too. Exactly. And even then, no one's bothering. No one's taking the time. I give it a zero. You reminded me of something before we transition into the other album. Um, something we talked about very briefly. Um, because Darren couldn't make it through the whole song, um, was the fucking real Greg Brady bit from the front, from the beginning of last week's show. Uh, while I was looking for footage of uh, Barry Williams performing that song, I came across a clip. I sent RC in an email. I want to say it was the 2000 Billboard Music Awards? No one's watching the Billboard Music Awards, especially in 2000. It aired on Fox... And they had three people from Mad TV come out. Uh, it was fucking. Oh, it was Nicole yeah. Sullivan, uh, the fucking guy who did Stewart. I don't remember his. Uh, Michael, Michael McDonald. McDonald Michael sure. McDonald. Then I I want to say. Uh, Deborah Wilson. Yes, you bring out the fucking star power, the Mad TV cast, the central cast to come out and be like, hey, you know, on our show we do parodies. But we do parodies with love for the original artists or whatever. Here to do a parody of (laughs) Real Slim Shady, Barry Williams, and he fucking... You need to see this for yourself. (laughs) Deadass did the I'm gonna march in the building with like a hundred people dressed like me to parody the goddamn MTV Music Awards Eminem performance. Oh, man. And it's censored all to shit, too, by the way. Like, he didn't even perform the whole song. They fucking butchered it. I just want to mention this, by the way. He comes in too soon. Like, so, on, like, on top of this being a <laughs> horrible fucking concept, he starts rapping, like, like two measures before he should be rapping. <laughs> See, I don't get it, because you can tell that's how he wrote it. Yeah! It's intentional, <laughs> but it's still off. Y'all act like you never seen a real Brady before, but he speaks it like it's not a lyric in the song. Yeah, like like that's the intro line. <laughs> yeah, like I'm sorry. What? What is this? I sometimes wonder, is like, do you not know what cadence sounds like? You're at least some sort of musician. I don't really know. You're more of like a Vegas type, like '90s Vegas performer. We gotta stop beating up on these uh, well-respected uh, legends in the game. We'll never get Barry Williams on the show at this rate. We burnt that Brady Bridge hours ago. (laughs) About 60 episodes ago, give or take, we reviewed uh, the debut album by Jaden Smith, uh, Sire. And here we are back again. I don't remember hardly anything about Sire. So when I went back and listened to the review, all the memories came flooding back. And, um... I might be remembering this incorrectly, but I'm pretty sure I had a similar experience with this Mm. album. Probably because it is a very similar album to the last one. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, (laughs) P-I-N-N-K. I I really 
really enjoyed those, especially N and K. Much like the last album where Blue was the highlight of that one. Yeah. Oh man, dude, B. Dude, I fucking love that song. That was, and remember, I was a fucking doubter all uh-huh. the way. I didn't like his acting. I didn't like his, you know, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to see that Karate Kid movie. I ain't trying to see that After Earth movie. No, no, oh, no. Wow. You know, I ain't, and so I ain't fucking with your little cartoon. I ain't fucking with your little rap song. What you doing no. this? And then I hear that first track and I'm like, like my, my goddamn jaw hits the floor, <laughs> unhinges <laughs> from my fucking face and hits the floor. I'm like, I cannot believe this fucking magical wonderland of fucking music that's happening around me. We fucking got Jaden and Willow coming together. Right. P. It's powerful. so good, dude. Dude, powerful lyrics. Thy hair inspired God to make the breeze. I was like, oh, shit. It's what is so this fucking epic, epic poem ominous. shit? Right? Oh, oh so my good. God. I was ready for the journey. I was ready for the fucking Tim Burton-like mm. fucking... The adventure you were gonna fucking take me on. And then by the time you get to track five, it's kinda like, well, anyways, let's just talk about how much money I've got, which kinda doesn't really hit that hard because you know who my dad is. Yeah, that never helps. <laughs> I still it's like noise like, though. Yeah, oh no, no, no. Yeah, no, noise I did like. But I, I'm talking about the like in general, the first album's experience. It was just kind of oh, like, yeah, yeah. like it's just hard to ride for you talking about, oh, we're the rebels and we're the underdogs, and isn't it great that we got you know hundreds of thousands of dollars at our disposal? And it's like, I mean, yeah, but of course you do. You're a trust fund baby. Like what? Who's impressed? We can always talk about, you know, uh, you know, separating the artist from the song and uh-huh. how you can interpret it on an individual basis. But it's just like. When you hear a lyric like that, like, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, it's like hearing a lyric by Ludacris where, you know, on one side, I remember people talking about this, like on his later albums where it'd be like, you know, I'm getting money, you know, I got a, I got my twin Glock 40s, you know, and I got uh, so much money. But mm. then you hear other songs where he's like, I'm struggling to feed my daughter. And it's just like, um, but didn't you just have the twin Glock 40 with the, what, what happened to that? <laughs> Yeah, it raises some and, eyebrows. But it was like it was the same album. Like, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, a rough I, year, dude. <laughs> a lot happened real fast. You know, when you hear the typical rapper brag about like how much money they have, the reason why it on some fundamental level works is because it's like you kind of understand the background, right? Like this guy probably came from poverty. He's doing better than he you know statistically should be doing, so he's fucking showing it off. But when it's just, the, but like, I feel like these rich kids see this, Jaden Smith included, and they go like, oh, look, isn't that aesthetic really cool? Let me m- put myself on that aesthetic without looking at the sort of background noise that kind of makes that aesthetic matter in the first place. You know what I mean? And so it's just like, now it's just, here's this 16-year-old kid imitating that rebellious behavior because look how cool it was when Kanye did it, but you don't have a message behind what you're saying half the time. It's just about the Birkin bags and and, and putting bags in the air and uh, thousands of dollars and this, that, and and flying off and this, and oh, uh, aren't I revolutionary because I've got the Misfits clothing line, Uh, which again is just like, of course you do. Your dad probably gave it to you. Like... I'm not impressed. On the on the last go around, there was this underlining thing of oh, Sire is like he's like this evil like mastermind, and then he's going around and he's killing people. He's like a serial killer. Ah, ooh, what's going on? I couldn't tell you what the fuck this album's supposed to be about, if anything. Like again, I didn't get that on the last album. I read that on Genius, and I was like, if you say so. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'll fucking take your word for it. <laughs> now it's like okay. Now we got Iris, and the only thing I got from this was like, okay, cool, he met a girl, uh, they spent some time, uh, they, they, they talked a few times, I think she might have went away, I think that's it, that's all I got. I wanna, I do wanna give this, uh, album a compliment in, in the sense of, like, what it does with sound. Yes! Yeah, production-wise, especially on intros and outros, there's always something Mm -hmm. really interesting that they do that just, like, plays with how you feel uh, about where the beat is going and stuff like that, but the overall package is kinda like, that was cool that you did stuff, but did I wanna listen to that again, you know? I really like the production, the beats were so fucking good, um, noise... Uh, like, lyrics? Meh, not really blowing me away. Really dope beat, though. What I hate is that it ends up, like, 
the album feels overthought. There's too much stuff happening. Yeah. Where, yeah, where it feels I like I don't have a, any favorite songs because it's just like there's just too much clutter and I never have a, any moment of clarity. And it just feels like songs just sort of ramble at a lot of points. And that would work if he had focus on, on something cohesive. But it always slides between I'm a materialistic guy who is getting all this money, you know, in, in this way that's not really like and, you know, mumbled through this voice that sounds like you don't even care about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's, I'm the lovelorn uh, guy who really misses your smile and this. And then it's like, oh, I'm trying to spit a political message. And it's like, it's just spreading out in these three different ways that never feels like it has any sort of, like, depth to it. I'm the mumbly rapper who, on track six, is going to criticize mumble rap. Get right? the fuck out of here, dude. You can't do that. You yeah. cannot have it both ways. He that really fucking, tries to uh, have his cake and eat it too. Dribble, dribble, dribble. See, nah. and that's what I'm saying. That's that's what gives the game away. He tries to have it both ways. You know, right before the track starts, he's like, no, nah, fuck that love shit. We doing that fucking hardcore drip shit. And it's just like, uh-huh. yeah, but when the song starts, it's still not ironic. No. You still want me to think you're cool when I listen to this song. That's still the point. You know, and so there's no joke, there's no wink to the audience, there's no irony. Unlike a song like, you know, maybe like Hey Ya, where it's like, hey, here's a happy song, but, oh, you hear it at this one point, it's kind of like gives the, the game away where if you really listen to those lyrics, it's really about not being happy, right? With this song, it's just, I, uh, hey, uh, my personality is that I'm making a hardcore rap song, so I'm just doing that. I'm just doing that. Please make this a hit song. At the very least with Hobson, it was made very clear that what he was doing was the parody song by how ridiculous his enunciation was. You know what I mean? We're just postponing the inevitable here by not talking about Tyler's verse on noise. Jaden, they think we fucking kiss and lick and suck in what they don't get. Sarcasm. L- let's end it like orgasm. I'm a nutcase, baby. Put a lock on that bitch. You think I'm digging graves the way I'm putting rocks on my wrist? Young T-Man, taller when you see him. I'm all about them fruits and my greens like a vegan. Darren. Darren. What? 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 So dark. It's so good. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm all about them fruits and my greens like a vegan. I was screaming. I I thought you was about to ditch. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, that was the one fucking moment. Dude. I'm ready for fucking uh, Igor too. Get this shit out of my face. We want Tyler. Get me Frankenstein. I want Bride of Igor. <laughs> can we get can we get that weird? I want sequel? side chick of Igor. <laughs> <laughs> this shit, dude. Man, like, Tyler the Creator is everything that Jaden wants to be in terms of. Oh like, my god, he does lyrical <laughs> he ability totally and cleverness <laughs> and like holy shit! I want to follow his flow and hear where he's going on this track. Like when I, when he first came in, I, like I wasn't even thinking it was Tyler the Creator. I was just like. Here's a dope fucking rapper who sounds a bit like, holy shit, bro. Oh, oh my shit, fucking, fucking God. Tyler on the track again. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> ah! The day we fucking kissing, licking, sucking. Oh, my God. I can't think of a better fucking opening line to a guest verse. Jaden, they think we fucking... Because we did. And then Aesop Rocky is the flossy rapper who has like the lyrical like ability to make his to make the vapid shit sound interesting that Jaden also wishes he could be. Like it's that without the gibberish that happens in between all of it. You know what I mean? Because you know Jaden will drop a dope lyric every now sure. and then. It's not like he like dude is not whack. And he yeah. actually has lots of interesting concepts and all these sorts of things, but it's just like you, you feel like you're pulling through the weeds just to figure out what the fuck he's talking about, what the point of the song is, where he's going with a lot of things. And some moments will be really clever, but it's just like most of it's just like, okay, like I feel like I, uh, you know, watched a really expensive action movie. And at the end, I was just like, well, that was, yeah, those are some really good set pieces, but what was the movie about? What was happening? Like, I feel like there was supposed to, something was supposed to matter, but it, I feel like it didn't. Especially in I Drip or Is. I, I don't know what that means, but and I couldn't tell what the song was about or trying to do, because it's like, okay, I get your, like, mocking mumble rap, okay, sure. And then later in the song, he just randomly goes, fuck Monsanto. 
It's like, what? Okay, but why? What, what did that have to do with anything? Like, I thought the verses were okay, but I couldn't figure out what the fuck he was talking about. Yeah, it's just random points of rebellion, but, like, yeah. there was no build-up or any sort of, like, yeah, relative reason why it's happening. He did the fucking RC special. Oh. What the? What, like, Iris is dropping. Iris really just going crazy. Iris the mixtape crazy. Oh my this God. shit is legendary. Legendary. <laughs> RC. Legendary. Uh, it's like a legendary Pokemon. It's all shiny. It's It has to be because we're telling you that it is. Eh? Isn't this dope? Please clap. Okay, <laughs> that it's dope. And, and you know the thing about it is, like, so the thing about it is, if you listen to Sire. Like, there's honestly no reason to listen to this album. Because it's everything that album was, but... Yeah. It, it is the Men in Black 2 <laughs> for the, this fucking, uh, for Sire's Men in Black 1. Because this one, like, it literally does the same sort of plinking intro thing that the first one does. That as soon as I heard it, I, I thought to myself, oh yeah, you kind of did that and the melody kind of sounds similar and why don't I just listen to that one? Because for that one, you had the restraint to make that go on for longer in a way that was really epic. And in this one, you just dropped it by like the second track and went to, no, no, I kind of did like the drop, but it was just kind of like, oh, well, you know, you're undercutting the, the epicness of bathing in the Euphrates and but then it, it was kind of getting away from oh, us. Yeah. What, what were these lyrics? Where she's like, hear my voice, it's unprescribed. I can't describe your units. He took his glass and filled it with the sea, with his diamonds dancing on a hill. I had one drink and everything turned pink. And they fucking repeat that later, like... That's supposed to mean something, right? The earlier lyrics are really cool. The bathing in the Euphrates. The cool imagery that I can think about and feel like, oh, this is really setting up this epic thing. But these lyrics just feel like scattershot. Like, it feels less like epic poetry and more like fucking Urban Dance Squad. Where you're just like, uh, do you just get out, like, just like whatever phrases you thought sounded cool. And you just, uh, we're gonna make them make sense later, you know? And, and that, you know, I could respect that in some level. But the issue is, like, they do this thing where he also wants to be the gangst, the hardcore gangster rapper that's flashing his pockets in your face. You gotta do better than that to make this work. Because all I'm thinking about is, well, what did that abstract lyric mean? What, what, you're flashing a Birkin bag in my face? Huh? Abstract rap and fucking uh, flossy rap shit? Like, I I'm not feeling how any of this is supposed to come together. And you're not doing anything to try to make it come together in any capacity. It's just supposed to feel deep that it's happening instead of any actual, like, narrative, any cohesive structure. If we're talking about features, you haven't even mentioned your boy, Kid Cudi, on On My Own. I can't even remember what he did. It's a big fuck yawn. Beat-wise? It was doing some interesting things. There were, like, stomps going on, and, like, at the same time, we heard, like, tambourines kind of going. I was like, oh, okay. But just fucking dullards, dude. Like, I can't stand his mumbly delivery on this album. Dude, there's one it, point. It only gets worse as it goes. There's one point where he kind of, like, switches up low to sound kind of proper. When the, 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 and I was just like, oh, shit. Hey, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> do that. And then, But then he fucking stopped again, and I was just like... Well, fucking goddamn it! Because like that could have been a unique soda style for him. How about fire department? Well, it's like a rock track, but then halfway I'm, through, I, it's goes like, like I'm like, rapping over a punk song, kind of. I could almost get with it if it again, if it like rocked harder. You know what I mean? And if he fucking was able to like keep up with yes. like the tempo, but yes. he doesn't. Yes, it just sounded like uh fucking judgment night. Where you got a rock group <laughs> and yeah. you got a rapper, but it's and like, you tried to have them and it just yeah! didn't fit. That's what a lot of this feels like. It feels like it's not the final draft, right? Like it feels like I hear how this can sound awesome, but you're not finished with it. You know what I mean? You gotta throw it in the oven for a little while longer. It ain't done yet. Yeah. So on I, I just woke up in the city and I'm ready to go. Vision in my cranium. I'm running through the globe. Bop this in the stadium. I'm with. I'm with my centerfold. Half hat shit. I swear this level's unaccessible. And then he's like, I wonder if they'll understand the metaphors. He literally says, it 
this oh, hook. Oh no! After this fucking hook about like I'm I'm doing good, living life, got the hottest fucking bitches, and I'm st- you know uh, uh, you know headlining stadium tours. I wonder if they'll understand my complex simile. Are you fucking serious? This is so up its own fucking ass. I wonder if my dope rhymes are gonna go over the simpletons' heads. <laughs> Jaden, fucking stop, dude. <laughs> like, you are not, like, bro, you are not Tupac at 19, fucking. Now, he did have one lyric when he when he uh, hits us with, uh, he's like, when you're 16 with a misdemeanor, that's no votes. Are you kidding me? Uh, this is a kid saying this, literally, pure evil, you're the epitome. I loved that lyric. Take away my rights. It's like whipping me. Take my life away with no empathy. Man, it's a nightmare. Burying all my people. Y'all never learned history. God damn. She she don't know about ancient ancient Greece. Oh man. Gotta put the energy in the step. OG's done. Told me next. Police always coming for our neck. Like, okay. That was incredible. I love that whole section. Yes. Yeah. Nothing else like that, that happens for the rest of the and album. And it's the second track. <laughs> yeah. It's all downhill. You kidding me? It's like, what? D- no. Did you hear how you started the album, man? Like, what? <laughs> the highest rated songs I have on here are N, K, Noise, uh, Got It, which is probably just for the beat. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. It was a song that was like a minute and a half. It was really fucking short. It was, it was pretty much an interlude. Do you remember, uh, like, the random censoring of words? It seemed like he was editing out references to, like, drugs. Or maybe, like, violence. That's what I was thinking. He he censored stick a couple times, so, like, okay, he's censoring out uh, gun references, too. But then later, he said, um, I got my heart broken, and heart was bleeped? When he bleeps out kill, but he didn't bleep out, like, shoot? I don't get it, but I I liked it. Like, I thought that was a cool thing he did. Yeah. Even if I didn't understand it, I thought it was interesting, if nothing else. Oh, yeah, like like the idea of, like, oh, you know, love is violence, you know. Oh, you know, okay. hey, you know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But the thing You're is... giving the boy some credit. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe a little too much, but, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, but See, like, that's the thing, right? Like, I can tell he wants to do something. Yeah. I don't think he went into this album trying to write something stupid and that, like, didn't make sense on purpose. Yeah, like, yeah, this, yeah. This obviously meant something to him, and we just don't get it. I don't know, man. He didn't really give us a whole lot of context to help us understand, either. I mean, this is the same guy that was building pyramids in his backyard. Like, you remember that shit? Like, uh, look, can we not <laughs> forget no. that, like, Jaden was a really weird, like, adolescent kid? Like, I don't want to judge him, but, like, you know, that shit did happen. Like, it's... <laughs> I, look, I'm still holding uh, homeboy's feet to the fire over the fucking, uh, I'm going to write a book about the Illuminati. Uh, 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 I, well, we're waiting. <laughs> I, <laughs> My book about the Illuminati with every purchase of Iris. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm not expecting that. Is that in the fucking booklet? Uh, must be Is in the, the booklet. Y- you know what? It's in the, the booklet Illuminati. that they gave out at the uh, that vegan pop-up place that he did in LA. The issue with... You know, him doing the censorship on certain things, though, is that, like, a lot of the shit that he's rapping doesn't fucking rhyme. So, like, usually when a censorship note happens, you know, with something that's being cut off, the idea is, like, you hear what the initial rhyme is, like, something like stick, and then the next rhyme is the, you, you can suck my, and then you're like, oh, you get what's I happening. I get it. Yeah, yeah. It's set up. But with this, it's like, okay, so the lyric is, Sire died in the sunset, don't be like him. Eris was born in the dark, then was handed a st- I mean, it has to rhyme with him. So, like, ha- handed a sh- a, a sim? A, a stem? A stem? A, a, a slim? <laughs> yeah, like, what? Like, what? What could it be? And then I see, like, oh, it was supposed to be stick. It's just, huh? What did you get overall? Uh, I ultimately got, like, a three. I got a three, too. Yeah, because... Pretty much dead on the money. I don't, you know, like, there are lots of creative things happening, but this album's more frustrating at how unfinished it sounds. And, yeah. like, you're even more frustrated by how cool some moments sound. Because you're like, that's really cool, I wish it meant something, you know? And, and, the, and the pink... Oh, with uh, the fucking razor on the K? 
Wait, what's that? Remember, it's like uh, time to get it. Got the vision, shoelace in the spot. Got a fu- uh, uh, got a fistful of guap. About to, and then the beat switch, and you hear the sort of like razors, like. Oh my god! Yeah, the electric razor sample. Yeah, and he's and he's talking about like getting a fade, dude. Yeah. That was really cool. You know? I really liked that. That was cool. Yeah, like, so I don't want to, like, completely diss at their creative moments, but it's just, like, it doesn't, it doesn't equate. There's not enough of it to warrant a full listen, I, I, I honestly feel. I like, I like how on noise, he, when he says, scrape metal on the pavement, fuck fashion away, you hear metal scraping, and it's <laughs> like, okay, that's kind of cool. I wish you would do that, like, a lot more. <laughs> like make yeah. that a constant thing, yeah. See, so like with with the P I N and K, like yeah, I gave them really high ratings. But am I gonna sit down and listen to P I N and K all back to back to back to back again, just randomly? Like put them in a playlist and hope they sync up. Like <laughs> I don't know about that noise. I really only like it for <clears throat> Tyler's verse. Sire is one character and Iris is right. another. But the uh-huh. thing that's weird is that, like, okay, so Pink is, or, or, I mean, I guess it could be a gender challenging thing, right? But it's like, because Pink is the album where he's Iris, which is the hardcore guy. But, like, I mean, typically in, in you know, the way things are now, Pink wouldn't be considered the hardcore thing, right? You know, I just made the connection. So you got this one character who then like dies or transforms into into another character. You you got Sire died, yeah, you know, yeah, and then Iris was born. Then you got the songs about oh, you know, I was just minding my own business, and the, and this woman just showed up, and I fell in love with her, and then she left. This is American Idiot. <laughs> this is just Jesus of Suburbia turning into goddamn St. Jimmy and fucking what's her name? Oh shit, it's just a fucking unlocking. Oh, and you know what album is next, right? Because he's doing all these, uh, you know, letter flip betweens. You know what's next? What's Jesus got to do? Out of the grave. Rise. Oh, is he's got to rise? <laughs> I called it. I called it. <laughs> That's gonna be the trilogy, right? Where we get the th- where we get the same album for a third time. <laughs> but that about wraps it up for the Going Off podcast. Thank you very much for checking us out. Um, if this is your first time listening to us, all of our old episodes are on Spotify, and I suggest that everyone uh, scope us out on Spotify. Make sure you're following us if you're not, because uh, that's ultimately going to be the easiest way uh, to make sure you don't miss an episode. Because if you're not thinking about it and you're not on YouTube, you don't get the notification there's a possible chance you might miss it or you're not on SoundCloud. Who's looking for us on SoundCloud? Don't forget, uh, uh, you know, my, my movie podcast, you know what I'm saying, where we're looking at Kevin, uh, Kevin Smith movies right now, you know, review a new, uh, brew.com slash review a new, you know what I'm saying, fuck with that. Uh, my station head, you know, we're going to be listening to music every Thursday, new hip hop, you know what I'm saying, 7 p.m., you know. Um, did we want to tell them about moving to, uh, uh, moving to your channel? Starting next week, the podcast will be put back on uh, my YouTube channel. That is youtube.com slash Muse Productions, which now obviously uh, I want you to head over to the channel and I want you to subscribe. But since we do other things on there anyway, we do weekly content that you might you might just find yourself enjoying. It's why I say the easiest way, ultimately, making sure you're following us on uh, on Spotify, because as of right now, we've got you jumping between the two the two uh, channels. And I understand it can get confusing. That's fine. But I do suggest people who might not be familiar with my channel to go over and see what we do. Because you might be surprised. You might end up liking what we do. Uh, I like to think we do something uh, pretty genuine and unique. Kind of niche. Something that a whole, not a whole lot of people are doing. Uh, riffing on old commercials and sitcoms and whatnot. If you used to like those Nostalgia Critic videos where he would watch blocks of commercials and tell like scripted jokes over them but that's not really your style of humor, and if you just don't really care for the Nostalgia Critic, uh, th- that's kind of what we do. Like, w- like we watch the commercials, and we riff on them, uh, we tell jokes over them. Uh, it- it's basically just the way I like to describe it, it's three best friends on a couch trying to make each other laugh. That's really what it is. It's just, like, trying to kind of outdo each other, trying to, like, like one-up each other on the jokes, there's a good bit of nostalgia in there. You see a commercial you remember from your childhood. We mark out for a second. 
Then we start telling jokes about it. Look at us. We're getting better at uh, advertising ourselves. <laughs> I, I've got the elevator pitch of Rift Break and Rift Comms pretty much memorized in my head that if it came down to it, I think I could spit it out pretty quick. It's youtube.com slash Muse Productions. And like I mentioned previously, the podcast will be back on that channel starting next week. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Patreon, because like I'd mentioned earlier, our uh, first album we talked about uh, was requested on Patreon. So if there's an album that you would like us to listen to and possibly torture us with, head on over to either patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse for details and find out how you can request an album to be reviewed on the podcast. And until next week, when we do it all again, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic, and I'm still waiting for Jaden Smith to release his expose about the Illuminati. We still waiting for you ass, bro. Don't think we forgot. <laughs> you better make good.